Hello everyone, this is Sarika Shrivastav. Today we are going to discuss the acquisition of new genes, that is how new genes have come into existence today as they are, how they have evolved during the course of evolution. There are two ways in which new genes could be acquired by a genome. Number one, by duplicating some or all the existing genes in the genome and number two, by acquiring genes from all from other species. So let's discuss the first part, the acquisition of new genes by gene duplication. So there are three ways of acquisition of new genes by gene duplication. Number one is by duplication of the entire genome. Number two, by duplication of a single chromosome or a, pa or a part of chromosome. And number three, by duplication of a single gene or group of genes. A point can be noted here that duplication of individual human chromosomes result in a cell that contains three copies of one chromosome and two copies of all the others. This condition is called trisomy and it is lethal or results in a genetic disease such as Down syndrome. Now let's see whole genome duplication that can result in sudden expansion in gene number. So the most rapid means of increasing gene number is by duplicating the entire genome. This can occur if an error during meiosis leads to the production of gametes that are diploid rather than haploid. If two diploid gametes fuse, then the result will be a type of autopolyploid in the case in this case, a tetraploid cell whose nucleus contains four copies of each chromosome is formed. As we can see in this diagram, on the right, an aberration has occurred between prophase 1 and prophase 2 and the pairs of chromosomes have not separated into different nuclei. The resulted gametes will be diploid rather than haploid. This, allow, this allows an autopolyploid to reduce to reproduce successfully but generally prevents interbreeding with the original organism from which it was derived. This is because a cross between for example a tetraploid and a diploid would, would give a triploid offspring which would not itself be able to reproduce because one full set of chromosome would lack homologous partners. Also, autopolyploids auto cannot interbreed successfully with their parents. Hugo de Vries, during his work the, on, with the evening primrose, Oinothera lamarckina, isolated a tetraploid version of this normally diploid plant, which he named as Oinothera gigas. As we can see in this figure, fusion of the diploid gamete produced by the aberrant meiosis with a haploid gamete produced by the normal meiosis leads to a triploid nucleus that is one that has three copies of each, chrom each homologous chromosomes. During prophase 1 of the next meiosis, two of these homologous chromosomes will form a bivalent but the third one will have no partner. So, this will have a disruptive effect on the segregation of chromosomes during anaphase and usually prevents meiosis from reaching a successful conclusion. This means that gametes are not, are not produced and the triplite organism is sterile. Now let's see the second condition that is alterations of the chromosome structure. So humans have 23 pair of chromosomes while chimpanzees have 24. Following the divergence of human and chimpanzees from a common ancestor, two ancestral chromosomes fused in the human line as we can see the diagram below. Also a second example in this is of human chromosome 16. As we can see the different colored blocks of DNA sequence from human chromosome 16 are derived are quite similar to the four mouse chromosomes that is chromosome 7, chromosome 8, chromosome 16 and chromosome 17. 
थैंक यू